Hello, Dogman Pro viewers, and welcome to episode number 10 of Eagle Watch. Joining me for the show once again, Eagle football head coach Matt Janis. Matt, how are you doing this morning? Daniel, doing good. How about you? Doing great. Even better. It's my dad's birthday, so happy birthday. Shout out to you, happy Dan. Happy birthday. But uh, uh, let's go back almost a week ago at this point to yeah. last Saturday up at Stout. Um, big road win again, coming out on top 33-31. Now that you've had some time to kind of go over that, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I got my heart beat back a, a little, a little bit. Um, but no, I think you know, for anybody that's watched, like I'm, I'm not lying in how I, how I kind of foreshadow these games. I, you know, we said exactly what it was going to be. It was going to be a four quarter uh, kind of back and fight, a back and forth fight here, and uh, you know, just really proud uh, of our guys. I think there was a, a couple different gut check, really, really gut check moments uh, for them on the bench, uh, both as an offense, both as a defense. Um, uh, times when we needed uh, big plays, and, and they certainly answered the bell uh, throughout that whole game. And uh, to set up uh, just you know key plays throughout, especially that second half, there's key plays here, key plays there, there uh, to set up the the way to, to win. Uh, really just impressed uh, with the way that they played, way they and the way they continue uh, to conduct themselves over the last couple of weeks here. So Gabe Lynch continued mm -hmm. the absolute tear he's on the last two games. Yeah, got over 400 yards the last two games. Went for I believe 166 last week. And a touchdown early in the third. Let's go over that play. Yeah, he's really just asserting himself that is really one of the best backs, not just in the, in the conference, but in the entire country. And uh, the the last two games and, and, and the carries and the yards and and how we've turned to him for, for big plays has been huge. And so we get into the really the, the second half here, really our, our first possession here of the second half. And, you know, it ended uh, our first half wasn't – wasn't our best football. Uh, you know, we, we, what we did do a good job, though, in the first half is we got points on the board at the very end. We kicked a, a huge field goal. I think it was a 46-yarder by Maddox Pratt there at the end of the first half uh, to put us within eight. Uh, and then so we get the ball then, and we get the ball in the start of the second half, and we go on this drive. And uh, Coach McGuire does a good job kind of formation and them into the boundary. So you see, again, uh, kind of giving some RPO looks. We have a three-bunch stack right here. Uh, we have our tight end right there. They're giving us really an odd look. We kind of felt like we were going to have pin and pull here uh, the entire the entire time. So, uh, what you know, you start from the wide here, uh, and you can just be able to see the pin and pull action right here. With our, We're going to pull our two guards uh, as well as our kind of our tackle here. Um, and what we get, we get the RPO read, and, and Kyle does, you know, they, what they do is they kind of give us a funky read with this overhang right here, right? Should, should, is he kind of – is he going to play out here or is he going to kind of play in the box? And what ends up happening is – is that he kind of plays in no man's land, right? So he kind of gives a little bit of a fuzzy read here. Really, he's playing the C-gap, which allows this defensive end here to kind of turn and run. So I think it kind of starts with, with Kyle recognizing that this guy's on really a, a chase path, and he's going to go try to take take the back out. And so Kyle just gives him just a little bit and just enough of a read to kind of slow down him right there. Uh, and then as we get kind of going, I'll, I'll take this to the tight end because the rest of this is the old line uh, and Gabe from here. So we get the ball, and you see the pin and pull action where we have our guards and, and we get just enough as we pull ourselves through here uh, on the on this outside look and as we see this is a huge block right there as we talk all the time in our pin and pull stuff this fold right here uh this down block on this angle right here huge block right here our tight end marco rykovich does a great job with his guy right here and that's a pretty clear picture for our guards as they start to pull themselves through uh alex cooley a, a guy that uh didn't start the year for us, and, and you know, fills in for injury. Uh, Alex continues to get better and better uh, each week. Gets just enough at 34 to knock him off his track. Levi Ledke gets through. He's going to get to our safety here. Great cut by Gabe. It's hard to make that tackle on, on Gabe. He's a strong guy. It's hard to make that tackle here uh, at the end, but really just great job by our O-line, fitting the pieces, staying within their rules. You see the odd front. We wanted to get into some pin and pull right here. You see how good of a play call it is by Coach McGuire and Coach McGlenn. We have angles, right? Like you can kind of see the angles that we're allowed to take. He's going to be kind of involved in the read game, so we can pull this guy through. We can take our angles, and you just see it based off the front, right, that, that they have these great angles as an offensive line. We get ourselves through. We get ourselves to the next level. It's not going to be kill shots all the time on the next level, but it's just enough to wash those linebackers. You see 21 getting washed right here, and then Gabe be able to break that tackle, finish the run. Huge momentum swing right there. So you talked a lot about the last couple of weeks and the O-line, just the job they've been doing. What are your thoughts about how they've kind of helped Gabe get his game, his game going? Obviously, Gabe's a phenomenal back. I think we got a lot of other really good backs here, but it, it, part of that is involved with that is their offensive line and the way they're playing. And I thought this is a group that, uh, you know, I always thought that the talent was there and that we had the the size and the physicality up front. 
And I think this is a group that's continued when they're composed. They're, they're one of the best in the country. And they've been showing that the last two weeks they, they want to run the ball. Uh, they want that kind of pressure on them. And so just really proud of the group that, that they've become. So a huge play on defense came in the third quarter with a safety. That maybe you could have said decided the game was a two-point win. Can we go kind of? Can we go through what kind of happened there? Yeah, no, we. I mean, it, and really, that 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 part starts. And so, so everybody knows right here, they're down here because Ethan Trano pins them down there. And our punter, we get a great punt, Mount Horeb guy, right? Yep. Mount Horeb guy. Uh, but we get a great punt uh, from Ethan that pins them down down here. And, and then it's up to us as a defense to take advantage of, of that situation. And so we get ourselves, we we get ourselves, we do a good job on first down. We get ourselves in the second and ten here. They go more of a heavier set, uh, and they kind of you can kind of see their their personnel grouping. Uh, and here, you know, they're bringing in all really all their tight ends, kind of giving us a really a twenty two uh, type type situation here. And then the way we look at it in terms of personnel, um, so we're worried about the shot right here. So we're kind of playing our corner off right there. Uh, but we what we do is we kind of stem up into our really our corner blitz. Right, and so Coach Z was right in terms of the fact that he thought they were going to take a shot down here. So we get our corner off. We're playing a really a cover three over here uh, with the bail. And what happens on this whole play is we blitz actually away from the sprint out, which is tough. But I thought Henry Walsh, who probably played his best game this year for us, does a good job of just working his contain right here and trying to force this guy to stop. Right, and, and so he and what he ends up doing is stopping, which is probably the worst thing that you can do when we have a corner blitz on, but he doesn't know that there's a corner blitz involved in that. So Henry does a great job. Our defensive end does a great job of forcing this pocket to move. We got the corner free off the edge right here. Our Sam is pushing himself to the flat. So we're kind of we're getting a double move. You guys see the double move. So Trent Mullen does a good job of staying on top of the double move right here. Uh, and, and that again, that hesitates the quarterback. And Tate Pitcher does a great job of coming around on this blitz. He does a great job of ball disruption. Uh, if we had instant replay and great camera angles, the ball is actually out. It shouldn't be a touchdown, in, in my opinion. Uh, but, like, the ball is out right here. Uh, it's ruled down. Um, but a great job and a huge play. Is, like I said, I, I think the ball's out. We have a, we don't have a great tight version of this. Our, our camera was at kind of a, a weird angle right here. But just thought of a great call by Coach Z, a great call by our guys executing the, the coverage right here uh, and getting a huge play and a huge stop on defense and, and put a lot of pressure on them when they're down, backed up right there. Heading back over the offensive side of the ball. Braden not touchdown in the fourth mm -hmm. and second straight game with a touchdown. What did you see on that play? Well, what I saw was our team needed to play. I mean, that that's the that's the reality of it. I mean, it's third and three. Uh, our team needed to play, um, and so what we go to, we get back into that kind of this trips bunch. We motion out of the trip bunch right here. You see Wyatt Lemoyne motioning in uh, a little bit here, uh, running really kind of a, an under high low uh, type concept right there uh, with our with our receivers. Um, and I just think our, our when we needed to play most, Brad not showed up, got us a touchdown, and obviously Zach Weir was able to extend the pocket. You know, clearly the, you know, he sees that the, the read is supposed to be in the front side in the middle of the field, right? We're reading this high-low, high-low action right here. And Stout, you see, does a good job. They, they had their linebacker sitting underneath. We're trying to run this dig right there with the under. The under's taking care of their linebackers, do a good job of kind of staying patient. Seven is their corner. And so you're going to watch our, their corner kind of become involved, right? And he's going to kind of chase this instead of maybe perhaps zoning off. I, I don't, again, I don't know what their coverage is, uh, but he chases Studer a little bit on the under. And so what ends up happening is they have really their outside linebacker is their peel player, right? So he's got to take the wheel and he's got to take that kind of that first out uh, of the backfield right here. And you can kind of see that's always kind of a tough matchup here. Uh, you can kind of see him get kind of a little turned around. Braden does a good job of kind of stemming him and then working to the outside. And Kyle does a great job of finding it, understanding what's going on on the back side of that. Hey, my, I'm going front side on this. Hey, my my high low, that, that concept was gone. Okay, here's my next progression. There it is. And does a great job, great throw, huge play. Absolutely huge play in this football game when our team needed it most. So we've talked a little bit about Jack Suter throughout the season, but lately it's been the other receivers that have been stepping up and scoring touchdowns for the Eagles. What are your thoughts about how they've kind of filled in when Jack hasn't been catching them? Yeah, it's, it's been hard. I mean, obviously, you know, we try to get the ball to, to Jack as, as much as humanly possible, right? We just could not, uh, nothing like off it. We were just off on, on the post. We tried to, I think we tried to throw three or, three or four big shot plays on the post and we just we just overthrow him a little bit there um still trying to get jack involved much possible but we also knew our, our receiving core is really good and why lemoyne is really good and and keaton aaron uh, continues to show us week in and week out that he's really good and so i think those guys uh, throughout the course of the game made some huge catches again keaton aaron 
for I think it's like the third or fourth week in a row has made a huge third down catch for us, right? And, and just <laughs> being able to move the sticks. And so I think if you look at our stat line, you know, it's not like we got receivers, a, a group of receiving cores that are going off like uh, like uh, Jamar Chase last yes. night, right? Like we don't we don't have that, but we're going to have guys uh, that are really, really talented that make the plays w- when our team needs it. So keeping it on the offensive side of the ball, Maddox Pratt had, mm-hmm. what a game. I mean, three for three on field goals, all the extra points went through. <laughs> Biggest field goal of his career, possibly, yeah. with about a minute left to take a two-point lead. What went down on that play? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we made a, a switch at kicker, and that's always, that's always tough. Um, you know, we, we went away from, from Michael. Uh, you know, Michael uh, just struggled a little bit. Uh, still a great kicker. Uh, just kind of happens sometimes. His kicker's just got to get in funks, and um, he's working himself out of it, and he will. And Michael's still a huge part of our, our special team, still a huge part. Uh, on our kickoff, but uh, you know Maddox also been a guy who who's been really good for us, and and we know that, and we know we have a really deep kicking room, uh, and so uh, Maddox, you know, I thought shine with this opportunity. I mean, he talked about a huge field goal before the half. He talked about another field goal early in, in the game, and then as we get moving here, we're kind of getting into the last drive, and and so you know we talk about you know our offense does a great job of moving us down there. We got a couple big plays to move us down here, and you guys can kind of see on the clock right here we got 156 left, and so we're just trying to get them. At this point, they started calling timeouts. We're at the time two minute warnings. We're trying to get them uh, to kind of burn their timeouts. It's it's kind of a, a situation of, of what do we want? We, and, and we chose to take as much time off the clock as we possibly could. So again, we see it. They're going to take another timeout here, and, and so we're kind of in this. Hey, we're going to we're going to run the ball. We feel like we felt like this is Maddox's range. We can make these field goals. So we're going to try to get them to use kind of their timeouts here moving forward. Uh, we were able to kind of get them here. Um, you know, again, you see they took six. At this point, they're they're out of timeouts. Uh, so we get our kind of our last run here, right? But the clock is now going to run, and it's going to kind of take us down. I think we're going to get it down to to a minute here, right? We get it down to a minute when we're kicking. So we know we got – you guys see the score. The scoreboard's all right there for us. And I thought you saw we had a great operation, right? And so a great operation on the kick. We kind of got uh, the, the hash centered enough mm-hmm. uh, to, you know, to kind of take care of. I think sometimes there's, you know, as a kicker, if you kind of kick from the hash, when you're inside the 10, it's kind of a goofy angle. So our offense did a good job of kind of centering that a little bit uh, for, for Maddox right here. But this was a huge kick. I know he's fired up about it, and he should be. He should be fired up. That, that's a huge kick to give us the lead here. Uh, and now it's going to turn the ball over uh, to their offense, and they got – you guys see it, 57 seconds left uh, on the clock right there, and they got to get into a, a, a no-huddle situation. And so uh, what they did a good job of, and, and like most offenses in a two-minute drill, um, you know, they want to get some easy throws early. It's not like we get to, we enter a two-minute drill and, and everybody thinks the first play is going to be a shot over the top. They're trying to – they move the ball a little bit. They got they got a few good passes. They move the sticks. I think it was once they moved the sticks here. Um, and then we have ultimately end up having a huge play is, is Henry uh, – Ross Gain gets a sack. Right. And, and so we get a sack. And so now that caused chaos for them. And you guys can see this, the down distance on this one now goes to second and 13. So I think they originally started about the 35. They get a first down. They're moving the sticks. OK, kind of how a two minute drill should operate. Uh, but then what throws it off is we get the sack. So so what happens is the offense is in disarray now and they're trying to they're trying to get to the ball. You guys can see it right here. They're trying to get to the ball. The receiver's trying to get back to the line of scrimmage after the, the snap here. Realistically, they're not even eligible. We're not sure if they're going to spike it or not. Um, I, I don't know if that was their plan to spike it, uh, but we get down into kind of a, a three-high safety look. Uh, we kind of just zone off here, and again, we're just really zoning off here as this thing goes. And Carver Cram's really our, our, our safety over here, um, and he's working himself that way. Uh, and what happens is the quarterback kind of breaks out, takes a shot, uh, maybe because of the timing on the clock, maybe because he, he felt a little rushed here, takes a shot. The receiver's kind of not on the same page with him. Carver gets the pick, game over, we go down, and, and it's over. It was one of those plays that said not only the lacrosse bench into a frenzy, but, I mean, the crowd is going nuts. You, the crowd showed up yet again mm-hmm. in an hour and a half, two-hour drive. What would you like to say to them for making that yeah. crowd? Continue to appreciate what we have. I mean, I, I tell the guys after every game, I mean, look, at it, it seems like we continuously go to stadiums and we continuously go places, and, and you look out and you see, you know, whether it's 50-50 or you see at times more more Eagle fans than, than anything else. I mean, you appreciate all the support. We had uh, not just parents and family. I mean, uh, we have a lot of – 
uh, alumni that, that that work kind of in the in the Twin Cities and live in the Twin Cities area. Uh, so we had a lot of those guys back at the game, like Max and Tyler Steubendick and Jack Anderson and Noah Coleman. Like it just it was just awesome for me afterwards to to just catch up with those guys, right? Guys that I haven't seen maybe in a year, uh, a year and a half, and get to kind of see how they're doing and see what they're how work's going, how they're you know if they have a girlfriend and all that stuff. It's just really cool for for me to check in with those guys too. So this week you got Whitewater coming to town. Touch a little bit more on the fan base. For fans that haven't come out to a game this year and are thinking the Whitewater game is the game, yeah. what would you tell them to expect? I just need everybody. Uh, in ter- I need everybody in that stadium uh, in terms of what to expect. Uh, this will be uh, exactly, I think, what these two teams are about. Uh, these are This is the top rushing offenses. This is the top rushing defenses uh, in the conference. Uh, this will be a um, This will be an old school, old school, physical football game and that's what it'll be the most physical team is going to win the football mm-hmm. game so kind of touching on the stout game last week you often talk about how crucial the time of possession is the eagles won that by a little bit what are your thoughts about how that went yeah it continues to be and it's always kind of been our offense with, with coach mcguire we preach that and we want to be we want to be fast we want to be physical and, and most importantly we want to be efficient we don't want to uh waste plays we don't want to just uh you know, all of a sudden just throw something up when it's not there. We don't want to force things. We want to consistently move the ball down the field. And, and we've continued to do that under Coach McGuire with his play calling. And and so when you can win the time of possession each and every week, and that, that's huge. I mean, that's huge. Your defense is off the field. You're limiting their offense. And it's, again, going back to kind of what we always talk about, right, Daniel? It's comp- complimentary football. Yep. So in the post-game huddle, you were telling the team about how they had your back the whole game. It may not have been your best coaching game, but the team for the full 60 minutes had your back. When did you, you say really that? get in there, Daniel. You're, you're around. I got to I gotta watch myself. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But, uh, no, I thought um, I thought our players did a great job of keeping their composure. I was uh, not happy with a, a drop ball that was ruled a touchdown. I was not happy with some other things, and that's stuff I can't control, and that's mm-hmm. going to happen. But uh, sometimes, you know, as the, as the head coach, you feel like, hey, I got to – I got to fight for my guys here and that's my job. So nobody else can worry about it. Um, and, and so I think that's just where it is. And, and for those guys to uh, take themselves out of it and not worry about that and, and not worry about, okay, maybe we were in on the interception that tape, that tape pitcher had not, not worry about some of that stuff and just focus on the next play. That's what I meant by that. So heading into this whitewater game, you've had, I mean, obviously the whole week to kind of prepare for what have you been telling the guys throughout the week leading up to this game? Continue to brace yourself mentally. Uh, continue to brace yourself mentally for what this game's going to be. We're going to get to the fourth quarter. Uh, you will be exhausted. You will be exhausted uh, physically. You will be exhausted mentally. And you're going to have to find a way to win the fourth quarter. So somewhere in the last few weeks, we're going to touch on a player to watch from UW Whitewater. Who would you say that is? Who uh, I think, uh, you know, defense, I mean, uh, they're, they're, I think it's going to be just, uh, if you're just a football fan, and like I said, kind of that old school mentality of, uh, football is a physical, football is a violent sport. Like, if you like that stuff, then you should come to this game and you should just watch our offensive line versus their defensive line because that's what you're going to see. I mean, you're going to see uh, two groups that are just going to bang heads against each other uh, for four quarters. So I, I think if you look at their team, uh, their defensive line is phenomenal. Uh, their Mike linebacker uh, is a huge guy. Like, And that's what they did such a good job putting them at that position when you're 6'3", 230 pounds, and you just sit in the middle of the field. That is that is hard to hard to run around, hard to throw around. Uh, and then I think they got some really talented defensive backs uh, on the on the front end. And then then I think it's the exact opposite on the other side when you look at their offense. Like watch our offensive line and their defensive line and in the run game. Uh, and then they got some really phenomenal receivers with that. I mean, they got a great receiving core um, that that is special. They got some really good players. Number nine is having a, a phenomenal year. Um, but it's the whole group of the receivers in general that are really really talented football players. Matt, of course, thank you for your time. Viewers, listeners, thank you as well. Best of luck this Saturday. Go Eagles. Thanks, Daniel. Go Eagles.